is, is there the possibility of a a pre <coughs> You know, a, a more axiomatic kind of uh, it's not a question quantum. of axiomatic. All right, but then it's some some sort of more basic Look, state than quantum mechanics. The answer is I don't know. The answer is I don't know. What you're seeing here is an interesting thing. Um, first of all, I would say it should be clear that this whole holographic story is the most radical thing that has happened to our understanding of space, time, matter since the invention of quantum mechanics and relativity. It is really something very, very different. Where is it going? What is it going to explain? How do we explain it? Well, incidentally, we all agree largely on what we've said up till now. And you'll find that in physics in general, probably in science in general, at any given time there are those things which have been made into established science that people agree on. And that subset, they will tend to agree on, unless they're screwballs and outside the main, uh, mainstream of the community. But that once you go past that, once you go even just a little bit past what we really know, you'll start finding it becoming a very, very human subject. A subject with, uh, let's put it this way, good physicists are as variable as snowflakes. Every single one of them is different. Every single one of them has a different perspective. And once you go past that point where we have confirmation, where we do agree, you're going to find that just about everybody has a different view of where it's going to go. Sure, well, that, that I can understand. But let, let's focus on the radicalism for a moment, because I think people can understand how relativity radically changed the Newtonian view of reality in the sense that the straight lines in the Newtonian world actually uh, are curved in certain spaces, and that curvature relates to the force of gravity in some way, and so around stars, space actually bends. That's a radical notion. It's probably only in the last 30 years that that's been internalized to be something that kind of everybody understands. You can't really appreciate the Matrix, movies like the Matrix, unless you sort of understand the sort of relativistic yeah. world. How does this notion produce a, a, a radical change in, in the way that we might see relativity. I think it's still a work in progress and we don't know. Harad has his view. I have my view. Herman has his view. What's his name over there has his view. <laughs> 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 and but I, I tell you, if you go out of this it, it'll room... Come to you. It'll come to yeah. you. <laughs> but you go two blocks outside of this room, there, there's a lot of people who have no view. Yeah. A lot this. of people have no view. Yeah, absolutely okay. no view. But uh, my own view is not all that different than my colleague over here. It's not that I think there's going to be this, some deterministic theory that's going to underlie quantum mechanics. I think it is, is going to inform how we think about quantum mechanics very deeply, and it's going to change in an enormously big way the way that we think about quantum mechanics. That I am sure of whether it will be the way that, uh, that Raphael and I have proposed over the last couple of weeks, or the way that uh, Hufter has proposed for years, uh, Herman has his ideas, I think that remains to be seen, and it is a work in progress. I think there will be progress on it. I think when we come back here, maybe not next year, but five years from now, uh, there will be more knowledge. But it's very clear we're on the cutting edge of and on the cusp of, I think, a major paradigm shift in the way the world All works. Right.